thanks so much for coming to break some bread with me. Have you been to TK Burger before? Man, this is such a beautiful location right here on PCH to get a meal together. We gotta break some bread just like Pastor Daniel said. Let's talk some Romans. Come on in, come on in. Hey, thanks so much for meeting up with me to get a meal. This place has great burgers and fries. What did you get? Oh, onion! Wow! Man, I've been out with a lot of people doing scripture of the day. That's one of the boldest choices I've seen. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kinda keep my distance after you down those bad boys. But hey, we gotta talk about Romans 14 because that's today's chapter. And there can be some real confusion in this chapter. And it's about people like me and you, brothers and sisters in Christ. How are we all gonna agree and get along when we think differently about gray areas, people have called them, Christian liberties, people have called them. There are things where we're not commanded specifically about them in Scripture. Now, the Bible is full of commands. We're supposed to obey everything that Jesus taught us. And some things Jesus told us not to do. Some things he told us to do. But what about things that aren't specifically commanded to not do or to do? How do we think through those things, especially when different people come to different conclusions, right? So, for example, we see here in Romans 14, they were having different conclusions about eating meat. And this meat was going to be meat sacrificed to idols. And of course, we don't, we're supposed to worship only one God. We don't want to worship any idols. So some people are like, if that meat was, if that animal was sacrificed to an idol and that's where that meat comes from, I'm not going to eat that. I'm going to abstain. Somebody else is like, yeah, but that's just an animal and God has given us all good things to enjoy as food. Doesn't really mean anything. I'm not worshiping the idol, so it's okay to eat that meat. Two different opinions that believers would come to. And what Romans 14 is saying, we got to get along on these things. We can't let issues like this divide us. We need to be united. Another example right there in verse 5. One person esteems one day as better than another while another steams all days alike. Maybe this is a, a leftover from the Old Testament law and you got somebody here in the church community in Rome is thinking, I gotta keep the Sabbath, I can't work on the Sabbath. Somebody else is like, hey, Christ is the fulfillment of the law. We have rest in Christ. I'm okay with working on the Sabbath. But how are these people gonna really be united and come to one mind when they think differently about something? Well, we've got two key principles to unity here in Romans 14. First principle is we can't judge what the other person is thinking. It says that multiple times. Verse four, who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? Hey, you're not the master here to decide what is right and wrong. They're serving Jesus Christ. You don't need to judge Jesus' servants. He'll take care of his own servants. Verse 13 says, therefore let us not pass judgment on one another any longer. So if you think what you're doing is right by not doing something and somebody else is doing it, you got to guard your heart that you don't judge your brother for doing something that the Bible doesn't tell him not to do. Watch out for judging one another. Romans has brought this up a couple of times now. This proclivity in our hearts to look down on other people and feel like we're doing the right thing, to feel self-righteous. we got to watch out for that. Another thing it says at the end here of Romans 14, the last verse, verse 23, for whatever does not proceed from faith is sin. You gotta have your own conscience clear about the decisions that you're making. You shouldn't be eat. You see a brother, for example, let's see two Roman believers were getting together. One's okay with eating meat. Now the other one, he doesn't really feel okay about eating the meat because he knows it was sacrificed to an idol, but he eats it just because his brother's eating it. See, you can't do that. You have to go along with your own conscience. You can't violate your own conscience. If you're doubting, don't do it. You need to make sure everything you do is faith, that you're doing it for the Lord, to obey Him, to glorify Him. If there's any question, stay away from it. Don't do it. Those are two great principles we get. About Romans 14. Now let's take this out of its ancient context here in the Roman church. Let's take it into Huntington Beach here today. You know what one major area that I see a lot of people at our church talking about? Let's talk about drinking alcohol for a second. Can we talk about that? Because we know and we've had a sermon on this from Ephesians chapter 5 that to get drunk that is debauchery. 
that is a sin. If you are under the influence of alcohol, you have sin, okay? But can people have a drink and not get drunk? And I think the answer to that is yes. Now it's really dangerous these days because compared to the Bible times, the alcoholic content of the beverages being served today is much higher. It's much easier to get drunk today than at the time of the New Testament. When they talk about drinking wine, the alcoholic content was way less than what a lot of people are drinking today. So there is a danger in drinking that you will get drunk, but I think that believers, Christian brothers and sisters can drink without getting drunk. So how are we gonna think through this? Because I know other brothers and sisters that if they were to drink at all, that would be a real temptation for them because uh, being drunk, uh, that used to be a real sin in their life before they met Jesus Christ. That used to be how they were trying to solve their problems was by getting drunk, drinking their problems away. Drunkenness was the habit of their life. They've repented of that. They've turned from it. They're now following Christ. Even a little drink, that could cause them to stumble. So you see how somebody's drinking over here, they're not thinking about sin at all. Somebody over here to drink would be a real source of temptation and a stumbling block to them. How are we gonna deal with it? Well, I'll just tell you very personally how I've decided to deal with drinking alcohol is as a pastor of our church, I've decided I'm not gonna drink alcohol because the last thing I wanna do as a pastor is cause somebody else in our church to stumble into sin. And so that's a commitment just that I've made. I'm not saying that the Bible says you're, you're more godly or anything if you don't drink, but I certainly believe that it's gonna help me not cause anybody at our church who might be tempted to get drunk with alcohol. I don't want them to see me drinking and think, well, it must be okay if, if the pastor's doing it. No, I don't, I don't wanna put a stumbling block to anybody. So for me, I've made that decision and all the other pastors at our church are like-minded with me. We're not gonna drink and we're not gonna serve alcohol at church events because we don't wanna cause anyone to stumble. Now, if there's a brother or sister at our church, maybe somebody watching this video and you are okay with drinking, you have a clear conscience, you're not doing it to get drunk, I wanna tell you something right now. I'm not here to judge you. Who am I to judge you? You serve the Lord Jesus Christ, not me. So this is something that's very important in my mind. I've decided I'm gonna abstain from any alcohol because I'm really, I've talked to so many people who that's been a real sin in their life and I don't wanna cause them to stumble. And so that's a decision I've made for myself. But when I know of a brother or sister who's, who is drinking alcohol, I'm very careful in my heart. I don't judge them. I don't look down on them. It's not really for me to determine what they're doing. That's between them and the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's probably the most common one of these kind of Romans 14 issues that I see playing out in our church. But there are others, things that the scripture doesn't say don't do or as that doesn't say to do. You got to make sure you're doing it with faith, with a clean conscience. And if you decide not to do it, well, make sure you're not judging people who are. This is what we learn from Romans 14. And once again, I just want to stress how important it is for all of us to be united. Satan loves the divided church. We're going to see that a lot as we get into 1 Corinthians, all these different ways that that church got divided. And one of the great things that God has blessed us with at Compass Bible Church, Huntington Beach, is unity in our leadership and unity in our church body. And we can't let issues like this get in the way of us uniting in the gospel of Jesus, loving one another, being at peace with one another. We gotta make sure there's no judgment going on uh, and we can't be looking down on each other. That's what Romans 14 is telling us. And I'm so glad that you and I got together. Now that we've had our real meal, the feast here, we can also eat some of this food. So thanks for joining me here at TK Burger on a beautiful day. Turns out it was another beautiful day in Huntington Beach. News flash, everybody. Breaking news. Another beautiful day. Hey, we'll see you for more right here on Scripture of the Day.